Part 2 of The Boy at the Back of the Class It was on the third Tuesday after school had started and Mrs Calm was taking the register. She was just about to call my name when there was a loud knock at the door. Usually, when there's a knock at the door, it's just someone from the other class bringing a note. So no one really pays any attention. But this time it was Mrs Sanders, the head. Mrs Sanders always wears her hair in the exact same way and peers over her glasses whenever she talks to anyone. Everyone is scared of her because when she gives attention, she doesn't just make you sit in a room, she makes you memorise long words from the dictionary and doesn't let you leave until you learn them all off by heart. The meaning and spelling. I've even heard of lower graders being stuck in detention for hours because they had to learn words that were as long as this page. So, when we saw that it was Mrs Sanders at the door, we all fell silent. She looked very serious as she walked up to Mrs Khan and we all wondered who was in trouble. After she had whispered and nodded for a few seconds, she suddenly turned around and peering over her glasses at us, pointed at the empty chair at the back of the class. All of us turned around to have a look at the empty chair. This was the chair. As I said, it was a pretty ordinary chair and it was empty because a girl called Dina left our class at the end of last year to move to Wales. No one really missed her except her best friend Clarissa. Dina had been a bit of a show off and she was always talking about how many presents her parents got her every week and how many pairs of trainers she had and all sorts of other things that no one else really cared about. She liked to sit at the back of the class because then she and Clarissa could pretend to be doing lessons when really they were drawing pictures of their favourite pop stars and giggling about someone they didn't like. Someone else could have taken the seat but no one really wanted to sit next to Clarissa. That's why the chair had stayed empty. After whispering for a few more seconds with Mrs Khan, Mrs Sanders left the classroom. We expected Mrs Khan to say something but she seemed to be waiting, so we waited too. It was all very serious and exciting, but before we could start guessing about what was going on, Mrs Sanders came back and this time she wasn't alone. Standing behind her was a boy, a boy none of us had ever seen before. He had short, dark hair and a large eyes and hardly blinked and smooth, pale skin. Everyone, said Mrs Khan, as a boy went and stood next to her, this is Ahmet and he'll be joining our class from today. He just moved to London and is new to the school, so I hope you all do your very best and make him feel welcome. We all watched in silence as Mrs Sanders led him to the empty chair. I felt sorry for him because I knew he wouldn't be like sitting next to Clarissa very much. She still missed Dina and everyone knew she hated boys. She says that they're stupid and smart. I think it must be one of the worst things in the world to be in a new place and have to sit with people you don't know, especially people that stare and scrawl at you like Clarissa was doing. I made a secret promise to myself right there and that I would be friends with the new boy. I happened to have some lemon sherbets in my bag that morning and I thought I would try and give him one at break time. And I would ask Josie and Tom and Michael if they will be friends too. After all, having four new friends would be much better than having none. Especially for a boy who looked as scared and as sad as the one now sitting at the back of our class.